We're literally going door to door to door, and our pitch is this. The British are coming. The British are coming. This is a Paul Revere moment. We're literally going from house to house to house going, do you realize that there's a freight train coming? It's going to go right through this house if you don't take action now. I can't tell you how excited I am to be here and to be with you to get this thing started. I'm really excited about this too. This is a brand new book. I'm the author of this book. It's called No Matter What, Even If Your Ass Falls Off. <laughs> they fought, I had to fight to get that asterisk in there. No matter what, even if your ass falls off. This is the pre-release copy of this book. It doesn't come out on Amazon until uh, June the 10th. So I'm gonna be signing copies of this book. By the way, anybody who follows me on social media during this talk, I'm gonna give away five signed copies to, the, to five of the people that go to at Michael O'Donnell Sales on uh, Instagram, Facebook. Just follow me on there, and then when you come up to the uh, booth, we'll have five people picked out. For that's my book, no matter what. And I'm excited to have that today. I just pulled them out of the box, right? Someone asked me today, how long did it take you to write that? I said, well, it took me about five years to do something that anybody would want to read about. What is that? I've been the number one solar salesman in the United States, which is probably in the world. I don't know. I haven't checked with Ukraine, but probably in the world, the number one solar salesman in the United States year after year after year after year uh, over the last five or six years. What does that mean? It means I've sold over 12 million watts of solar during that time. Somebody suggested I write a book, my coach. I spend money on coaching, how to be a coach, right? I know how to sell. Someone had to teach me how to be a good coach, right? I'm the owner of a solar company. I got a lot of people working for me, wrote a book, have a training program. I'm coaching a lot of people, right? So I had to invest in myself, find out how to be a coach. They said, well, you gotta be credible. You have to write that book. So I wrote that book. It took me about a year and a half to do that. And truly it is a recipe. The real title of the book is A Recipe for a Seven Figure Income in Sales. Turns out people want to know a little bit about that. I was actually going to call the book, Get One No. I had a breakthrough in 2016 that took me from doing quite a bit of sales to this monstrous amount of sales. And part of that breakthrough was getting my relationship with the word no. The breakthrough was understanding what the money's for in sales. The money in sales is not for getting a yes. The yes is the cashier. The money is actually through going through the work, and the money in solar is insane. Salespeople make in my company, on average, $6,000 every time they make a sale. Do you think that's for knocking on someone's door and spending 10 minutes at their door suggesting they take a look at a presentation? Do you think that's for the hour and a half that you spend in the homes? Anybody going to pay anybody in here an hour and a half, $6,000? Man, the most expensive hooker on planet Earth don't make $6,000 for an hour and a half. She might have to spend the night for that, right? So uh, what's the money for? The money is for the work, and the work is getting all of the no's. And if you see the cover of the book, the, all of the power in the universe, which all comes from the sun, every bit of energy in the universe is from the sun, is coming through that word no. That's where the money comes from, guys. It comes from doing the work coming through the word no. I want to thank Lee Haight for having me here. I also want to thank him for reminding me that this is Memorial Day. I could easily go through a weekend like this. I'm not a military guy. I didn't spend any time in the military. I owe my freedom to the guys who have made this uh, United States of America free. Those are the military guys. Thank you to Lee for reminding me of that. <laughs> And it also reminds, so where the title of this book came from, uh, I was at a retreat, I was gonna call it Get One No, and I was with Sharon Lecter, she's the co-author to uh, the uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. She wrote that book with Guy Kiyosaki. And I was telling her what the book was about and, and how I overcame some monstrous challenges in my life. Very, very early in my life, I ended up in a lot of trouble. I ended up facing jail from a jail cell. I realized that my life was unmanageable and I was powerless over alcohol, I was powerless over drugs, and my life was pretty much hopeless unless I found a solution to that problem. And I was talking to Sharon about the solution to that problem being part of the breakthrough in getting to a seven-figure income in solar sales, and that when I was finally willing 
to go to any length to do something about that problem so I didn't have to spend my life behind bars, I went and met these little old guys sitting in a 12-step program, and they said, guys, they said to me, if you want to get this thing, you have to do what we did. And I said, well, what did you guys do? Well, we went to 90 meetings in 90 days. You got to go to 90 meetings in 90 days no matter what, and you'll get this thing. And I'm like, wow, that's, you know, that's pretty tough. Oh, and by the way, there's a catch. Don't drink in between meetings. <laughs> that was the little catch. Go to 90 meetings in 90 days. Don't drink in between meetings. And by the way, on that one day when you think you're not going to go, go anyway. Even if your ass falls off, if your ass falls off, pick it up and take it to a meeting. And guys, I discovered the breakthrough for me was the very same thing. There was just the simple, that sounds absurd, right? Just go to 90 meetings in 90 days and you'll avoid cataclysmic Disaster, go to 90 meetings in 90 days and you'll have a chance of being a success in life, which I've had that chance. I've been 38 years without a drink or a drug since that day I walked into that first <laughs> meeting. And when I was talking to Sharon about the success that I'd had, I said it was really the same thing. I made a sacred commitment, a sacred commitment to do the same thing over and over and over again every single day, no matter what even if my ass falls off. If it falls off, pick it up and get back to that sacred commitment of the thing that you're gonna do every single solitary day. The other part of the breakthrough was in 2016, I realized that it was a lot easier to sell somebody a big ticket item if they had a gun to their head and I wasn't the one holding the gun. Man, it's really easy to sell something. <laughs> when someone is brought to their attention that there's a gun pointed at their head, if they don't become aware of that and take action, cataclysmic disaster and profound regret will follow. And guys, there's a big difference between selling roofing and selling solar, and the big difference is people need a roof. They gotta have a roof. If they don't have a roof, they're in big trouble. People don't need solar. They already have electricity. They're already able to afford it. It's our job to help them understand that not taking action, there is a gun pointed to their head. I'm going to describe that and show it to you in vivid detail. That gun pointed to their head is going to cause them major problems. They need to take action and they need to do that right now. And I discovered how to do that in 2015 and 16. The tax credits were coming to an end. If you get into solar, you're going to find out the government pays for 26% of solar. That was coming to an end in 2016, and so was the metering credits. You get into solar, we're going to teach you exactly how these metering credits, solar doesn't cost any money, it pays for itself. Between the government, the sun, and these credits, it doesn't cost the customer anything. In fact, they make a six-figure profit by switching from burning fossil fuels to going with solar. A six-figure profit. And if they don't do it, they end up completely screwed. And so my ability to convey that to customers has resulted in me winning 10 double Golden Door Awards, or 10 double, 10 Golden Door Awards? <laughs> they give away a Golden Door Award if you sell a million watts of solar. I've sold over two every year, year after year after year after year. And so that's the double Golden Door Award. Uh, only one or two other people have ever won that ever. Uh, and that is something that I'm very proud of, obviously, but what I'm more proud of is if you see this leaderboard, that's my name, this is my company's leaderboard, this is last quarter's results. Guys, this isn't something that I used to do back in the day. This is something that I do two or three or four times every single day. You wanna know, who here wants the recipe to a seven-figure income in solar sales? Anybody wanna know? You want the recipe? If your grandma made chicken soup and it was awesome, and you're thinking, do you have to be like some sort of like sorceress or witch to make this awesome brew? Like, do you have to know things that other people don't know? Yeah. But she could show you how to make that chicken soup by doing two things. Number one, show you how to do it and then give you the recipe. And then you could make that chicken soup for the rest of your life. I do this every day. It's, we've created a repeatable process. These are the guys on my team that also won a Golden Door Award this year by following this recipe. Everyone on that stage made over three quarters of a million dollars selling solar. Here's the recipe. Be in two, three, or four presentations every day and sell almost all of them. 
Ta-da! <laughs> so how are you gonna do that? That's what this book is about. That's what my training program is about, which is called MOD Sales Academy. Uh, I'm partnered with Lee, everyone who becomes part of the training program that's available at this conference uh, is going to have the MOD Sales Academy, which teaches you how to do what? Be in two, three, or four presentations every single solitary day and close almost every single one of them. The closing average in the solar industry is about 18%. My closing ratio is somewhere between 80 and 100% given the day, right? So on average, over 80%. The people who go through this training program go from about 18%. Solar is really hard to sell if you don't know how to sell it. It's really easy to sell if you know how to sell it, if you know how to sell it. So you gotta be shown how to do it, be given the recipe, and then of course, uh, do the work. All right, guys, and what's the reason? One of the reasons that I found myself, I, and when I first got into solar and I was blazing this trail and all of a sudden I found myself experiencing diminishing intent. Why? I was making, and this happens in solar all the time, I was making so much money, I didn't need any more money. When you start making a five-figure paycheck every single week, you'll find yourself with your bills paid off, my debt gone, paid off my mortgage, didn't know what else to do. So you know what I did? I started selling less. And I had to acquire what I call a nine-figure mindset. In other words, I had to teach my mind and my brain that what I was trying to do was take advantage of this opportunity, not just use this opportunity to not have to work hard. And so in order to do that, I adopted the nine-figure mindset. That comes from the book Napoleon Hill, Think and Grow Rich. That's not a book, guys. That's a basic text on how to teach your brain, reprogram your brain, make it understand that you're trying to make a million dollars a year. If you don't think that, if you don't understand that, it's just not going to happen. If you teach your brain, which that book will teach you how to do, one of the big parts of my book is explaining to you how I utilize Think and Grow Rich every single solitary day. I'm on a call, I'm on a mastermind. That word mastermind, that word gets thrown around a lot. Napoleon Hill came up with that word and he was told by Carnegie to go talk to Ford, Mr. Ford, Henry Ford said, how do you become this, what in that day would have been, a, this day would have been a billionaire. How did you do that? He sat with them in a mastermind. He went to Edison, sat with Edison in a mastermind. He did that until he understood the basic concepts, put it into that book and created a basic text. Guys, I don't have a hundred million dollars yet, but I have a plan and I have a mindset. And if you were to follow me around, you'd think I'm trying to make a hundred million dollars. And I am. I have a 10 figure Nine figure, I have an eight figure net worth just from selling solar. How do you get to a nine figure net worth? Let me tell you, I have the recipe for that too. Make a million dollars a year and live on 20% of it. Invest the other 80% of it into investments and you then can find the capital that you'll need to be the owner of a big deal that you can blow up sales and sell to somebody for a couple hundred million bucks, then you too will have a nine figure net worth. That's my plan, that plan's in place, it's happening, it's underway right now. All right, guys, the solar opportunity is different than the roofing opportunity. People will always need roofing. Will they always need solar? Yes. Will the opportunity for a world-class salesman to make a million dollars a year doing it always be there? No. Why is that? Because the plan to get the world solar is to increase the price of fossil fuels to the point where people cannot afford them anymore, and they will come to the conclusion on their own. That's great news for business owners right? It's great news for the solar industry, but it's not great news. If you want to make a million dollars a year in solar, you need to do that between now and in the next five years, because in that period of time, fossil fuels will become so expensive, people will just wake up one day and go, uncle, I give, I can't do it. And so we need to treat that next five years as a marathon, but treat that marathon as if it's a sprint. You've got to sprint through that marathon to end up with what I call financial independence and a nine-figure mindset. It is absolutely imperative that customers understand the gravity of this situation. They don't get it. They have electricity. They're able to afford it. They don't understand that October is the deadline for them to get the 26% tax credit. It must be installed by the end of the year or they're going to get a 22% tax credit. I don't always follow that sentence with the previous one. Net metering credits are changing. Interest rates are rising. Unprecedented inflation is upon us. The cost of electricity, the cost of natural gas has doubled since the beginning of the year. Guys, our plan is to go from coal to natural gas and the price of it's doubled. 
in the last uh, four or five months. I talked to that lady last summer. She wasn't interested in solar. Now that the price of everything she buys has climbed up almost out of reach, all of a sudden she's figuring, what the heck's going to happen with my electricity bill? In Arizona, that's the local inflation rate, 10.9%. Guys, at 10.9% inflation, a family's finances is under siege. It's a conflagration. This is the second most expensive bill that they have, and the price of it is soaring out of control. It may be an existential threat. It may push them out of their home. No more electricity, inflation at its highest rate in 40 years. That first uh, segment talking about who's going to pay, pay for this. Guys, when the government establishes and becomes aware of an existential threat, it, 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 uh, it goes into action. And this government is into action on figuring out the solution to this existential threat. In 1961, JFK identified an existential threat, and that was Russia being able to deliver intercontinental ballistic weapons to the United States. The solution for that was to become the superpower that was leading the race in rocket technology. That had nothing to do with us saying, we're gonna go to the moon. That wasn't for the camera shot. That wasn't for the press opportunity. That was to solve an existential threat. He said, we'll be there by when? The end of the decade, by 1969, people said, guys, that's insane. Like, is this guy high? We can't get to the moon. We're gonna put a man on the moon by the end of the decade. We didn't even have an electronic calculator at the time, let alone the iPhone that's in your pocket that could run an actual World War III. We didn't have any of that. And what happened? What happened was that on July 20th, 1969, which was our deadline, which was what? The end of the decade, we had Neil Armstrong put one foot onto the moon. The biggest distance in planet Earth, and one of the things I talk about every day in our universe, the biggest distance is the distance between zero and one. The distance between zero steps on the moon and one step on the moon was an unimaginable gap that we closed because we had a deadline, and we set that deadline up because we had an existential threat. Have we had an existential threat since then? We do. We're in the process of ruining this planet. What those lunar guys said is, hey, you better not mess up this rocket. It's our trip home. Don't screw the pooch. We're in the process of screwing up the pooch, which is the planet that we live on. And I don't know of anybody who's excited about occupying Mars except for Elon Musk. All right? So I would recommend maybe we start. I don't care what your opinion is or your politics are. You know, I don't, it, I don't care what you think about climate change. Guys, digging stuff out of the ground, garbage essentially, and lighting it on fire to provide us with energy is just a horrible idea. It's medieval. We've been doing it since we sat around fires. We're still doing it to power our homes. Guys, there's not going to be any more combustion engines by the end of the decade. And what our government has decided is we will cut our emissions in half by 2030. That's the end of the decade. There are 65 million homes in the United States that are suitable for solar. How many of them have solar already? Three million, 5%. Just to meet the agreement, just to meet our commitments in the Paris Climate Accord, we have got to get to 50% having our emissions by the end of the decade. How are we going to do that? It's fantastical, it can't be done, we don't have the technology. Well, we guess what? We not only have the technology, we have the means. When the government decided that we needed to stop smoking, they came out with an incentive program, kind of like the 26% tax credit in solar. That's the incentive program. So the incentive program was smoking was written right on the label of every single pack of cigarettes sold in the United States. What did that incentive plan said? It said, if you quit smoking today, you're gonna have an extra 20, 30 years to your life and there'll be wonderful years instead of horrible years tied to an oxygen tank, right? And that got everybody in the 60s, everybody quit smoking with that incentive plan, right? Oh wait, nobody quit smoking in the 1960s. My parents smoked with two hands, three packs of cigarettes a day. My mom would be smoking with one hand while she was hitting kids in the back seat that weren't even a seat belt, let alone a car seat. That's, you know, things that times have changed. And they're changing again, and they're changing radically, and they're changing right 
now. We're going to cut our emissions in half by the end of the decade. And if we don't do it because there's a 26% cash incentive from the government, we will do it because of the stick. If you don't take the carrot, then you'll get the stick. What was the stick with cigarettes? Cancer was one stick, and that, didn't, that did not deter anyone. Everybody kept smoking. We all know the polar bears are losing their ice cap or whatever the heck's going on over there, right? Anybody deciding not to buy SUVs? No. What caused people to stop smoking was it from going from 80 cents a pack to $8 a pack. That's what got people worried about their health. And so they all quit smoking in droves, and now almost nobody smokes. You're going to vape if you've got to have nicotine delivered. That very same thing is going to happen. Now, yesterday, we heard Dustin up here talk about, yeah, solar would be kind of a nice idea, but I built this big, beautiful home. It's my pride and joy, and there's no way in the world I'm going to hang this R2-D2 stuff off my, <laughs> off my thing. He said, I don't want that on my roof. Guys in sales, we call that an objection. And if you're a world-class salesman, you need to learn how to overcome objections. And I was talking with Jocko over lunch, and I said, Jocko, if you had transferred from the military Navy into the private sector Navy, and you were working for a CEO who had decided that their new marquee cruise ship was so beautiful, there was no way in the world they could put these ugly damn lifeboats. Everybody seen the cruise ship? First thing you know, it's all these ugly damn life, <laughs> life rafts on the side. And then after you watch them and look at them, they kind of blend away. Infrastructure to the eye goes away. As soon as you know it's there and you see it three or four times, you quit seeing it. But when you first see that beautiful you know, cruise ship and you see all these ugly lifeboats, you go, what the hell are they doing that for? If you were asked, Jocko, I said, if you were working for an admiral who had decided that they were going to, a new flagship ship was going to get rid of the lifeboats. You know, kind of like, who's here, who, who here saw Titanic? Everyone saw Titanic? Everyone in the room? What was the big problem after they hit the, light, the iceberg? Not enough, lifeboats. not enough lifeboats. Why was that? And they didn't like it was going to, they didn't like the picture and how it was going to look in the New York Times coming across the Atlantic with all those damn lifeboats. So they took them off. And that was the problem. I said, Jocko, if that was going on, would you say something to the CEO? And he said, absolutely. There's no way I would stand still for that kind of a proposal to get rid of life essential security infrastructure because we didn't like the way it looked. And guys, two things. One, that's some badass looking infrastructure. That's the way solar looks today. It doesn't look like that previous picture. There's a big difference between what we were installing 10 years ago and what we're installing today. But there's also a big difference between what we're selling. We're not selling solar panels, right? For 10 years, I've been selling solar by telling people the price of their electricity was going to double over the next 15 years. I've sold 12 million watts of solar in the last five years by doing this. Yeah, I know it's only tw uh, 20 cents now, but it's going to double in the next 15 years. Why? Because it's doubled every 15 years for the last 60 years we're pretty sure that it's gonna double again and you'll be here paying 40 cents and sort of 20 cents, all the numbers are, just hit you in the head. Guys, they sold 12 million watts of solar and I was wrong. I was so wrong that it's painful. What I just showed you on this slide makes what I said off by a magnitude of two or three in time and quantity. What we're really selling, guys, is energy security. If somebody goes solar, it's gonna cost them nothing. And by the way, they can put the roof in there. That's also going to cost them nothing, no dollars out of their pocket. We'll install the roof, we'll install the solar, and they're going to spend not even a single dollar. And then what's going to happen is their utility bill is going to go to zero. In Arizona, people pay five, $600 a month during the summer for the utility bill, and I can show them that their utility bill is going to go to zero. What they're going to have instead is a solar bill. Okay, so you're swapping out one bill for another. Who the hell cares about that? Well, guys, the solar bill, and I'll tell you right now, I can quote everybody in here solar for your own home. Do you want to know the price? Who wants to know the price? Yeah. It's less. It's less than you're paying right now. You're paying a monthly electric bill. We can put solar on your home, and it creates a positive cash flow in month one. Solar costs less. And by the way, I can add a roof to it. Instead of selling them a $40,000 solar system, I can sell them a $65,000 solar system. 
and now their monthly payment on a 25-year 199 special solar financing is gonna be almost exactly the same as it was for just their electric bill. Now I got them all their electricity they need and a free roof. Who here wants a free roof? Where you still get paid, by the way. You still get paid for selling roof. So what's gonna happen in the very, and we're not talking about 15 years. I was wrong about that. How long is it gonna take this to double, maybe triple? The end of the decade. We're going to cut our emissions in half by the end of the decade. All they need to do is reach out and turn that dial in what we spend for power and we'll all go solar tomorrow. If they just triple it, we'll literally all be solar tomorrow. They just have to turn that dial. Does anyone here think they'll turn that dial? Do you believe that? Do you believe they'll turn that dial like they did with cigarettes, go from 80 cents to $8 a pack? Do you think they'll do that? 10X? God dang it, I hope not. That's, I'm starting to scare myself. Guys, a solar presentation should literally light the customer's ass on fire. Guys, there's a big difference between selling roofing and selling solar. They need a roof and they don't need solar. A roofing presentation rarely lights the customer's ass on fire. If you know how to, a good solar presentation will, anybody feeling some heat underneath them right now? You feeling any heat under your butt? Anybody feeling any heat? Under, that's a fire. We're, we're, we're lighting a fire under your ass to understand that you need to get out to customers and explain this to them. If they put a roof on without adding solar to it, they're doing that customer a disservice. They're not informing them of this freight train that's coming. Guys, this is the freight train. I've been explaining this to people for many years that their cost was gonna go from 20 cents to 40 cents in the next 15 years. I was wrong. Just with infrastructure upgrades alone, it was gonna triple, not double. I was just wrong about that. Oh, and by the way, we added this Green New Deal and all bets are off. You think we'll, you think we'll start turning that dial? Guys, we've already begun turning that dial. It started last November when President Biden said we're gonna have an infrastructure bill. And by the way, don't worry about this infrastructure bill. Yeah, it's $2 billion, but don't worry, it's paid for. It's paid for. Do we have like a fairy godmother? You know, does Uncle Sam really have any money? What paid for meant is we weren't gonna add it to the debt. We weren't gonna add it to the deficit. It meant we were gonna pay for it. How are we gonna pay for it? What they meant was, don't worry, it's paid for. They weren't gonna add it to the income tax. They weren't gonna add it to the debt. Where the hell does the money come from? Anybody read the bill? I read the bill. Guess where the money comes from? Taxing this stuff to death. You think the government is a little worried or a little sad? Are they sad that gasoline is five bucks a gallon? You think they're sad that it's $6.50 in California? Are they crying? Are they trying to fix that problem? They kind of act like, oh, we're going to use some reserves, blah, blah, blah. They're not sad. They are jumping for joy. They are gleeful that gasoline is now $5. Why? Because it creates two solutions with one, with one problem. Never let a good crisis go to waste. Their plan, and, and so they're playing for this infrastructure, seaports, airports, information highway, roads, bridges. It all gets paid for by taxing this stuff to death. It's already happening. We just don't know it. Guys, we go door to door selling solar. I know we go door to door selling roofing as well, or we wait for the phone to ring. No one, the phone never rings in solar. That's the bad news. No one picks up the phone and goes, I think I need solar today. Call that solar guy over here. That's why it's also harder to sell solar. They don't need it. And so there's never the day comes that says, let's call that solar guy. It's also hard because once you knock on a door and you say, hey, I think you should take a look at this. They're gonna take a look at it and they're gonna decide solar's awesome. Man, you lit a fire under my ass. I think we should be solar. I'm so glad you knocked on my door. I'm so glad you provided that service. I'm so glad you just helped me understand all this. And we really wanna go solar. Uh, by the way, you're gonna email me this proposal, right? <laughs> you're gonna email this to me, right? I'm gonna have all this information, right? That's a solar guy sign that the customer's completely sold, is embarrassed at how giddy they are, and is now trying to tell you that they're gonna buy solar on a different day than today. And that's the problem with solar. They don't need it, and they never call you back. And so if you don't learn this, if you don't learn that the primary service as a solar salesperson is to help the customer understand that it's imperative that they act right now today, 
The chapter in my closing course in the MOD Sales Academy is, I'm not coming back. I'm not coming back. This is not the meeting about the meeting. This is the meeting. It's not the meeting about the meeting. I'm not coming back. I can't come back. If you say that to a customer in the wrong way, you're going to piss them off, right? They're going to think this is some BS sales technique. They're going to think this is some made-up contrivance and end-of-the-quarter special that you get at the car dealership, some of this today-only thing that you're going to get in a timeshare deal. Guys, that's not the case. If a customer does not fill out the paperwork and move forward with solar today, they're literally screwed. The cost of the panels are going up. The deadline for the tax credits are coming up. The interest rates are rising. All this stuff is happening. They absolutely have to sign this thing, and I can show you exactly how to get them to understand that and go, no, I get it, I see it. Does this seem like a re I have a better idea than procrastination. I have a better idea than leaving this pile of money and then coming back on a different day and hoping it's stall here. I'm gonna show them how they're gonna be $100,000 richer. We're not trying to save them 50 bucks a month. I'm not trying to make it so they can go to Applebee's one more time a month. I'm trying to make it so they can win their game. What's their game? Their game is to work for 30, 40, 50 years, and at the end of it, have enough money so they're not living on Social Security. Have enough money so they're not eating dog food. That's their game, and I can show them how they will, just by saying thumbs up, sounds good, let's do this, spend zero money spend a negative $50 this month over the course of the next 20 or 25 years, they're literally going to be $100,000 richer. Who here would like to be $100,000 more wealthy when they retire? Would that help your game? Is that the game you're playing? To have money for retirement, have money for security? The problem is, if you leave their house, they're never going to call you back. They need a roof and they call you back. They don't need solar. They're never calling you back. So it's much more difficult to sell. And so that's what we're doing. Lee and I have a program. We're going to help you understand how to do this. The MOD Sales Academy is part of his university uh, package that he's offering. We're going to show people exactly how to do this so that you're able to take advantage of this literally what is an existential threat. And if families don't understand that this is an existential threat to their family's security, that's what we're at the door. We're not going door to door, Avon calling, wouldn't you like to have some of this stuff? We're literally going door to door to door, and our pitch is this, the British are coming. The British are coming. This is a Paul Revere moment. We're literally going from house to house to house going, do you realize? that there's a freight train coming, it's gonna go right through this house if you don't take action now. You are sailing this ship right up the gut of one of the worst storms. Is anyone here disagree with me? This is one of the worst financial storms anyone's ever seen in their lifetime. Like people don't even know how to treat it. Like we don't even know what contingency plans. This is one damn thing they can reach out, go thumbs up, spend no money, and alter the course of their family's finances literally forever. If they just spend the exact same amount of money that we know they're gonna spend in the next 10 years on they already have electric bill, there's no way around it. If they just move that money out of this ever increasing expense, can't add one cent to their net worth, and move that money over to this asset, they're buying a power plant, that's capital equipment, that equipment produces a commodity, we know the value and the profit coming out of that commodity will triple by when? By when? The end of the decade. We're suggesting they take the same amount of money that they're renting and become an owner, it costs less money, not more, adds to their net worth, adds to their financial security, and it all costs them nothing, not even a single dollar. So I appreciate your time. I look forward to meeting each one of you. Uh, the book, No Matter What, I'll be right next to the Sky Diamonds booth. Pre-release copies, I'll be signing those. I'll also be meeting many of you later. Uh, Lee and I have got a package together where you can learn how to do this, add this to your roofing business, or if you're already take, selling solar, take this to a crazy level. Anybody who follows me right now at Michael O'Donnell Sales, we're gonna pull five of those names out of a hat and you'll get a free signed copy at the end of this thing. But I think that this goal that we have as a people, you didn't even know we had this goal, right? I wish our government was better at communicating to us. <laughs> we have a goal to reduce our emissions in half by the end of the decade. 
I'm convinced that if every one of us were to take this mission on and add some people underneath us that we're going to be, what is that? That's 30 million solar systems in the next seven years. That sounds like an opportunity to me. And someone's going to take advantage of that opportunity. I know I'm going to, I hope you do as well. Thank you again.